If things aren't going your way as a college football coach, you got problems with the administration, or you just don't want to do it anymore, just hit that J.G. Wentworth button and fail your way into an immediate payday. It's my money, and I want it now. I got a feel-good story for you. What else do you want the man to do? We're counting down the best plays. How do you define success? George Reister. Shout out Jimbo Fish. You regularly hear coaches, administrators, and media members talking about what's bad for college football, but they never talk about coaching contracts at big time schools. Jimbo Fisher was 11 and 11 in his last 22 games and 45 and 25 overall at Texas A&M. Do you think he's gonna lose sleep over spats with the administration over his coaching hires and being fired when he has the largest buyout in the country? Texas A&M owes him about $77 million immediately with no offset for future employment my college football coaching friends won't like this video but if they're honest they know that they deserve to be handsomely paid but the structure of the contracts is out of hand and unsustainable these college football coaching buyouts are insane right now and you might be thinking george tell me something i don't already know but i don't think that you get it so let me put it in terms that outline just how insane these buyouts have gotten from January 1st, 2010 to January 21st, 2021, public universities and the FBS paid out over $533.6 million to head and assistant football and men's and women's basketball coaches. Now the overwhelming majority of that is in football and over the last two years, you can add over $150 million to that total partially thanks to Jimbo Fisher. And it's not just college football's halves that are in self-imposed financial hell. Justin Wilcox at Cal is overseeing a four and six Cal team that went into last week with the 130th scoring defense. And if the Berkeley administration wanted to send him packing, they'd have to write a check for almost $21 million. When Gus Malzahn got fired in 2020 from Auburn, the school paid was then a record $21 million buyout. And Wilcox's $21 million buyout wouldn't even crack the top 25 of contractual buyouts in the 2023 season. And the burden ultimately gets paid by fans with increased cost to attend games, donation requests, and booster slush funds being run dry that should be directed toward building sustainable NIL funds. Schools regularly give out unwarranted contract extensions to keep coaches from having a wandering eye toward other programs. But the buyouts that schools and boosters pay for firing an underperforming coach is often 10 to 20 times more than what the coach would owe the school if they left for another program while still under contract. But they tell us there's not enough money to pay the player. Plus, when has a buyout on the coach's side ever deterred a coach from leaving? USC gladly sent Oklahoma a check for four and a half million dollars to get Lincoln Riley out of his Sooners contract and paid another 1.1 million to Oklahoma. That way Riley could bring recently fired defensive coordinator Alex Grinch to LA with him. Lincoln Riley had just signed a $38.9 million extension before the 21 season that kept him under contract with Oklahoma through the 25-26 season. And had they fired him for cause, they would have owed him 25 million. Look at the disparity between the $70 million buyout LSU would be on the hook for if they fired Brian Kelly and the $2 million Brian Kelly would be responsible for if he decided to team hop again before January 1st, 2024. Remember when Ed Ogeron joked about being more happy to take his $17.1 million buyout after going 11 and 11 after winning the 2019 national championship? Say, coach, you got $17.1 million on your contract. We're going to give it to you. <laughs> I said, what time do you want me to leave? What door you want me out of, brother? <laughs> if Coach O was happy to walk away with 17 million, how much tap dancing do you think Brian Kelly would do if he gets the phone call that the Tigers are gonna pay out the $70 million that they owe him? Or what about Matt Rule? Nebraska watched the Carolina Panthers pay $40 million to get him to leave Charlotte, and they still locked themselves into a $62 million buyout. Billy Napier is 11 and 12 at Florida so far, and if they want him to hit the reset button, he gets a check for $32 million. I mean, Auburn even gave Hugh Freeze a $25 million buyout, and maybe they figured that if he does get fired, it'll be for cost, but they just got done handing Brian Harson. $15 million to leave town. One point that college coaches love to make about the downside of the NIL era is that star players getting paid, it takes away from their hunger to chase the money that comes with an NFL contract. Let's assume that that is true. 
then why wouldn't the same mindset apply to people in the coaching profession? I got two scenarios for you. In scenario A, a coach can put in the long hours of game planning, recruiting, developing, staffing, dealing with boosters and the media, and ultimately winning, and is rewarded with his full contract. In scenario B, a coach can slack on game planning, phone in recruiting, neglect development, hire unqualified friends, ignore the boosters, and make life hard on the media all while losing games and they're rewarded with their full contract even sooner. It's like taking a lump sum in the lottery instead of an annuity. Buy me out for failure? Don't threaten me with a good time, buddy. Colleges are depending on coaches to be so crazy about winning that they aren't motivated by the money in their contract, all while knowing the coach wouldn't have even signed that contract if the money wasn't right. So you can't feel sorry for these institutions when they're doing it to themselves. Let that sink in.